So I had dinner last night with four friends of mine. Uh, they all live here in Penang. And over dinner, the suggestions were coming thick and fast about all the places I should go, places I should visit, and of course, all the uh, different foods that I should try. And uh, <laughs> they were very disappointed at the number of famous dishes from Penang that I haven't tried yet. And one of those suggestions as a place to go was uh, the Cecil Street Market. And I might be, I might even be a little bit late for this. It's, uh, yeah, it's already 10 o'clock in the morning. And I, my impression is markets are always more interesting and bustling and busier the earlier you get there. But we'll see. And speaking of going out to eat, which is what I'm going to do when I get to the market, I have plans to go to this restaurant on Sunday morning with one of the friends that I met last night. This is like a dim sum place, which is extremely popular. And we're going to come here early to miss the crowds because right now, as you can see, there's a crowd of people waiting for tables outside. Yeah, the, uh, the crowds have to be, have to be uh, controlled. Good morning. Oh, sorry. So there's the place. You can see how busy it is. But in theory, and if everything works out, I'll be having my breakfast here on Sunday morning, tomorrow morning. And uh, today, tomorrow could be particularly busy because this is a holiday. Tomorrow is the Prophet Muhammad's birthday and uh, they turned it into a three day weekend. So today is a holiday, it's a public holiday, Saturday, Sunday's a public holiday and Monday is also a public holiday. So a lot of businesses are going to be closed and people are going to be out eating at restaurants like that one there. But then the conversation moved on to the dishes that I haven't tried yet and that I should try. And there was one in particular that for some reason my, my dinner companions found very amusing. Like they told me the name of it and, and they were talking amongst themselves about this dish all the ingredients in it, what they call them in, in different languages, what we call them in English, and they're arguing about, no, it's this, no, it has that. Who, I guess they're talking about who makes the best version of this dish and everything about it. You know, that Penang passion for food was coming out. And I honestly didn't understand anything of what they were talking about. Uh, all the ingredients and the foods, I just sort of lost track of the whole thing. But I was left with the impression that, well, I'm on a mission now, and I have to try this dish, whatever happens. You know, whatever else I do in Penang, I can't leave now after that long discussion without trying that particular dish. And then I was doing some reading about the Cecil Market this morning, and I found an article like the 10 best dishes to try at Cecil Market, and the number one dish you're supposed to try is the dish my friends were telling me I needed to try. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm waiting to uh, cross this busy street here and I'll take advantage of that to get out my smartphone so I can uh, look up the name of this dish because I don't have a prayer of uh, remembering it. All right, here we go. The article is called uh, Nine Awesome Foods to Try at Cecil Street Market. And number one, Passember. We'll see what they have to say about it. Hmm. They're talking about one particular market stall, though, that where you get the best version of this. And there's no way I'll be able to find it. I'll be lucky if I can even find this dish. So we'll see what happens. But they say, uh, tossed as a salad with a variety of crisp fritters, cooker and carapac, tofu, julienne cucumbers, and jicama, slathered in a tasty tomatoey sauce, thickened with sweet potatoes, 
This Passember is worth the queue and the hype. Flavors were subtle, but packed a punch. But of course, he's talking about the Passember at this particular stall, but it doesn't actually say which one it is. I, I, I won't be able to find it. Like I said, I'll just wander around and show people pictures of Passember and then see where I can get any version of it. Another uh, busy intersection. Yeah, this is this one uh, comes right out of Comtar, the bus exchange. So you get a lot of uh, traffic, yeah, coming out of there, including the buses. I guess it's a good day to stay in Georgetown, looking at the sky. What I mean is not going far away, up the coast or anything like that, because the weather does not look promising. I should have brought my umbrella, actually probably going to get rain done but I'm more interested in the uh, market just seeing the atmosphere than I am in the food because you know, that was another thing with my you know with any group of Malaysians you get together they start uh, talking about food and of course someone will say you know you can get this dish here and the other person will say no 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 they make terrible whatever dish that is the best you know you have to go to the best restaurant that makes the best version of that dish otherwise it's a complete waste of time you have to get the best this place is famous for making the best right but of course i have to explain multiple times that i would know the difference you can put the best nasi lemak in front of me the worst nasi lemak according to you know penang standards and they would taste they would both taste absolutely fine to me i wouldn't i wouldn't be able to tell the difference the funny thing is when i was looking for information about this market almost every website i found it kind of said the same thing they would say that you know when tourists come to penang they go to this market and that market and some other market those are the famous markets where all the tourists go but local people they know better and they go to the real traditional markets where you get the good food apparently they serve all the bad food at the tourist markets and the good food you've got to go to the secret places that only the uh, you know people on penang know about and then that leads them into saying and one of those is cecil street market and they say that's where you have to go and uh, foreigners never go to this market nobody knows about it and yet <laughs> I mean, every every search I did about uh, markets points me towards this um, Cecil Street market. So if it was unknown to tourists, all the articles they're writing about it will soon change that. <laughs> and we're all going there. I'm going there because of this article I read or because my friends told me to go there. And now hopefully I'll post a video about it and then other people will go there before you know it everybody will be know will know about it ay 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 what is this street this might actually be the other side of beach street that i was walking on before just outside of the World Heritage Site area. Maybe this is beach. I'll, I'll check later on. There's a lot of interesting things going on here. A lot of interesting uh, shops and fabricating places. Ha! And with my selfie stick, I can even look above the gates, the fences, and I can see what's over there. <laughs> oh boy. I keep thinking I really should have brought my umbrella. My timing isn't terrible not great either there's the uh, Cecil Street Market doesn't look busy from here 
but as you can see, it uh, <laughs> is really starting to rain. I don't mind getting wet, but all my gear, you know? So I could jog a little bit to get my uh, camera out of the rain. The heavy rain didn't last long, so I could have waited it out under some uh, shelter somewhere. So it looks like this side of the market where I entered is the, uh, the wet market, which I'm told becomes active in the afternoon. And we've got some uh, market kittens waiting. Hey? Hello. Little scruffy fellows, these two, one of them. Yeah, some eye infections. Sorry, buddy. This one could do with a bit of fattening up. A little bony. I just saw probably dad over there is a big tomcat in the corner. And when I showed up, the female cat came walking up to him and she was bursting. She's got another, uh, another litter of kittens coming on the way see what this kitten thinks of my camera. What do you think of that? <laughs> Curious, but not too sure. So it looks like the market also has other sections, like here, fruits and vegetables and uh, household goods. Oh, I see a bunch of people through a gap ahead of me. And that's probably, yeah, that would be the food area for sure. So this would be the uh, wet market, household goods section, and uh, hungry people. That's their section over there. From a distance, it looked really busy, but close up, I think uh, there might be, uh, might be room for a wandering Canadian and his camera. Before I zero in on Passembur, which I'm sure I'm pronouncing horribly, just going to go for a little stroll, kind of get my bearings, see what's going on. And there's a line up here, so they must be serving something good, something well known. Ah, actually, I read about it. I think this place is in my article that I read online. The duck meat. Wait, your tongue. My friends last night were still teasing me about how I can't say that. The TH apostrophe NG, tongue. They say it in a way that's correct, and, and I get it wrong every time. But yeah, I definitely have to try that. And I think the article I read ended with number nine being like anything fried, that you have to have something fried to round out your, your experience here. So they listed like eight individual dishes and then said, and, and then something fried, like I was just passing there. Definitely a, a bustling place. I thought my timing was pretty good for the time to come here. It's not like they uh, started shutting down or anything. Still open and busy. Oh, this is one of these uh, breakfast places where you get the French toast, toast bread, mini bread, and uh, tea and coffee. A lot of pastries, snacks you can take home. And more kind of pastries and fried goods.
peanuts, kachang. Oh, look at that, they even have large signs hanging from the ceiling, kind of identifying what you can get in various places. Uh, I see a sign over there for Lorbach, L-O-R-B-A-K, and I think the article listed one of those as one of the nine things you had to try. Here's another Kuei, Kuei Xiao Tung. But this is not the famous duck one. A lot of people enjoying their breakfast. Oh, look at that Jawa Mi. I wonder if I can have three dishes, would that work? Could I have Passember, the famous duck, Kuei Tiao Tung, and Jawa Mi? We had a little bit of a discussion over dinner about the origin of Jawa Mi, because I thought I was told that it was um, from India by the man who told me about it. But online it said it came from Indonesia and then there was a heated debate amongst my friends about what the truth was. Jawa Mi. And the, the advice they gave me, like in terms of talking about the meal, oh, and there's a laksa. You can get laksa over there, Assam laksa. Penang white coffee over there. But yeah, their advice to me was, don't bring up the subject. Like, don't, uh, it's too controversial. <laughs> just, just talk about the food, taste it, you know, talk about the ingredients, but don't try to talk about where it comes from because you'll just start arguments. So here's hockey and me, Lord me. So that's kind of the place. Oh, curry me. No, this is very interesting because yeah, my friends were giving me a hard time about all the dishes I haven't tried yet, and you could come here and just follow the signs like if they tell me oh you have to try curry me like there's the lineup right there for curry me that must be famous good curry me you can just yeah, get everything here in one uh, one place easily okay well i'm going to reset and uh get out my phone and try to find uh, and use the photo. Maybe if people can point me towards uh, Passember. That'll be my first uh, first meal. Excuse me. Can I ask you a question? Do you know if I can find this dish here? Oh, you have it. Passember. Oh, okay. Down there. Uh, underneath the fan. Underneath the fan, right there. Oh, okay. We're showing the 550 ringgit Malaysia, the one. Okay, that's it? That's the one. Okay. Very yeah. famous. Very good. That's what I heard. They have it in the on the internet, <laughs> so I have to try it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also the Kuei Tiao Tung. Right, the duck one there. That one, also famous. Maybe, maybe I will have both. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things to try oh, here. Uh, everything I'll go and try that, yeah. Thank you. Okay, okay. Good, check it out. I got some local advice. Turned out to be uh, quite a lucky coincidence. I just went up to a table to ask someone if I can get this dish, passembur, here. And they were eating passembur. And um, they pointed me over here. Oh, okay. And there is a lineup. So that means it's... Uh... Oh, yeah, look at that. I didn't even notice it when I came by the first time. The sign says uh, passembur right there. I don't know if there are different types. I guess I'll just get in the line and um, 
see what happens. Five and a half ringgit. Let's sneak around to the back just for a minute and see how it's prepared. I guess that's a completed. Yeah, I don't know if you um, get to choose ingredients or is there just one standard one? Let's see, she breaks up one of those chops up one of those, cuts up one of those, and then some of this, some of that, something else, and then uh, tomato sauce, I guess, is on top, and that's a passing bird. All right, looks simple enough. You just get in line, and... Uh, They'll whip it up for you. Small? Small. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, eat here. Yep. I think that's mine, and then we get the sauce. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was, uh, I think that was the easy part. The more difficult part might be sitting down. And one thing I've learned is if you want to make a local shop owner happy in Malaysia, you have exact change. <laughs> if you have change, they're generally very happy. I wonder if the guys who helped me out are still sitting at their table. Maybe they wouldn't mind if I joined them, but... Uh, <laughs> Hello. Well, there's a big table over there. I, I don't know if uh, seating is restricted depending on what food you got. Is it okay to sit here? Yeah. How many person? Just one, but other people. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many flies. You want water? Yeah, what do, let's see, how about? Only here, only. Oh, thank you, thank you. No. It takes a village. Like six people got together to find me a seat. Only one picture only. Uh, how about... I don't you. Okay, honey line? Uh, four one, huh? Yep. Thank you. Uh, oh. It's funny. I'm tucked away here in the corner. Yeah, I thought, you know, I could sit at the big table and other people could just join me, that would be fine, but if they have a table for one. And I ordered small passembur because I think I'm going to have two more dishes at least. And um, to sit at this table, I, I, I've been talking about this a heck a lot. But then for some reason, I completely forgot about it. You have to order a drink to rent the table. So this is their drinks menu. I was looking for, you know, tea or coffee or something, but they didn't have that. So I got um, honey lime. $2 only. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, things happen fast at Cecil Street Market. Uh, <laughs> What's that line from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? You have to move, life move fast. You gotta do something or you'll miss it. Something like that. Anyway, your drink shows up almost before you've ordered it. it happens that fast. Anyway, that's my drink. 
Mm, that is nice. I like that. I'd order it again, and that's my highest praise for any food or drink. Would I order it again? Yeah. This is good. I like it. It's sweet, I think. Maybe that's, maybe that's why it jumped out at me as good, because uh, it's sweet. So, all set to uh, give this a try. I honestly have no idea what it is or what it's going to taste like. I wouldn't know jicama if you threw me into a house full of it. I wouldn't be able to find the jicama. Got something here. Yeah, good. Just a tomato sauce. So far, everything is nice and crunchy. I like crunchy stuff. Hmm. Yeah, this is good. Tofu. Yeah. I don't. Maybe this. Um, maybe this white stuff is um, jicama, like chopped up diced jicama, I'm not sure. It's a good meal. I mean, again, would I order it again? I'd order it again tomorrow, any day of the week, absolutely. So it's very, um, it appeals to me because it's a very simple dish, very filling. Maybe even a little bit sweet. I think there's some sugar in here. It's a sweet dish. I think maybe the um, tomato sauce has some sweetener added. And I like the mixture, uh, the mix of uh, textures, because they take one of those big, almost like a cookie-like thing, and crumble it up into pieces, and that, and it's down at the bottom. And that's what this is. Oh. Yeah, it's crunchy. You know, this is a medium. And then you've got soft tofu. Yeah, it's good. I mean, in terms of flavor, I don't know. I mean, it's tomatoey, tomato sauce. Very, it's good. It's not spicy at all, which I, I don't mind. <laughs> Anyway, there you get it. There you have it. Passenger. <laughs> ah, the lineup has died down for the um, famous duck meat kuei tiao tung. This is the famous place, right? Yes, yes. They make the best? Yes. Have you eaten here before? Yes. yes. Yeah? It's good? Yep, definitely. I'm <laughs> local. Okay. It is quite, quite okay. Usually quite long too. Yeah, I was here earlier and there was a long lineup. Yeah. But you don't have to choose different no. ingredients. They just no. make it for you. It just... Yeah, just how it is like normal. Normal. I guess he got a whole bunch to go. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm so slow. No worries. I'm doing it for the first time. Okay. I'm slow, but they're fast. Man, when you're in line and you're ordering, you better be ready with your money and people in line behind you. They want their... Uh, they want their husband to Kuei Tiao Tung. I didn't realize until now, though, that by ordering three different dishes at different times, I have to sit down three individual times, and then I have to order a new drink each time. <laughs> so, but there's no way I could have um, ordered, gotten three of these uh, all at once. 
But look how look how they organized it. The chopsticks and the spices right on top. Yeah, maybe I can go right back to my uh, original table, table for one. It's uh, it's clearly the worst table in the place by far. So that kind of makes it um, suitable for me. It's like the kind of table I would have picked for myself anyway. And this is the one that they gave me. I learned my lesson. Another time I ordered some breakfast and it came with a, a little cup like this full of peppers. And I thought they were sweet peppers or pickled peppers and I dumped the whole thing in. And it turns out they were hot peppers. And it was way too hot for me. I think the guy that's in charge of these tables, he recognized me that I was sitting here before, so he's not uh, making me buy another drink. I'm a uh, preferred customer. So yeah, dive in and uh, give this a try. Got the fish balls, and I guess uh, duck meat. So far so good. Would I order it again? Sure. Why not? I think for someone to declare this the best that you can get in the city or a very good version of this dish, they'd have to be more familiar with the subtle flavors than I am. Because to be honest, to me, it, it tastes like a bowl of noodles. You know, I had duck noodles like this in Mesa two or three times a week. I went to the same place and if it's the same dish, the ones I had in Mesa are just as good as this. I don't know, what do I know? But yeah, noodles are good. They have a nice uh, nice texture. So I think that is it for my experience of this dish. I may get Jawa, Jawa Mi, and then with Jawa Mi, I think that'll be my, uh, that'll be my breakfast. So that was my second dish, and uh, Oh, by the way, in the article that I read, the first dish I had, I've already forgotten the name of it. What is it called? The one that starts with a P with the tomato sauce. That was their number one recommendation. And the duck noodles that I just had was their number two recommendation. And now I'm going to have Jawa Mi, or Mi Jawa. And I don't think that was on his list at all, but it's on my personal list of something I've wanted to try. So that is going to be uh, number three for me. And they have a uh, regular for 550 and large for 650. So I'm going to uh, see if I can get. Uh, oh, that looks pretty good, though. I have to say, the curry me. Maybe the lineup here is justified, but no, I cannot be distracted. It's going to be a Jawa me. Oh. Hello, uh, re regular? Regular, yeah. Jawa me? Yeah, eat here. Or... Eat here, here. here? To eat here, yes. Thank you. Everything okay, sir? Everything is okay? I think so. so. Mix? So, look at that. Okay, so here's a bunch of the ingredients that go into it. Everything is so neatly prepared in advance. Some shrimp and sauce. The sauce is probably the key thing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I wonder about the dishes, now that I think about it. People grab these, uh, they're not throwaway dishes. Do they all end up back at the same place, I wonder? Yeah, let's go right back to my same table. Uh. Yeah, it's interesting. 
I keep talking about how I always end up at the worst possible table everywhere I go. And part of the reason for that, I think it's a psychological thing, I do it without thinking about it. I like to have the table that nobody else wants, and then I'm more comfortable there. I don't feel like I'm bothering anyone else by taking the good table. No one's looking at my table, waiting for me to get up and go away because they want my table. I can just relax. And here I've had three dishes at this table, and even my cutlery is still here. I can come back and use my wooden chopsticks. It's kind of funny. Even when I showed up, the man was uh, showing me to this table, ambulance. Um, the people at the other table kind of felt bad for me, I think, because the table was covered in flies, and they leaned over and chased away all the flies so I could sit down. Okay. All right. Let's uh, see what this sauce tastes like. That's nice. Very light. Some of the tofu. A bit of sliced egg. And he had um, different types of noodles. And I think he was going to ask me, like, which type do I want? But then he said, you know, I can mix. So he actually gave me a little bit of all of them. So that, that works for me. But speaking of the plates, maybe there's like a central, all the plates go to the same place, washed by the same people, stored in the same place. And then they get divided up again amongst all the different food stalls. But they are color coded. One place has all orange plates. Another place has all pink ones, blue ones. So there is some kind of a system going on here. The noodles are good. I think when I'm talking about how the dishes don't strike me as so unbelievably amazing, it might be partially that I don't... Uh, honey lime? Um, a woman came to get a drink. Is a different person. But to be honest, I want another honey lime drink, so... I'm happy to order one. I was just saying that a lot of what makes one of these dishes good, or make, like they get a reputation for making good food, probably has a lot to do with the noodles, the ingredients and the texture and the way they cook them, because they are good. Every dish I've had this morning, the noodles have like, they've been perfect. And I think maybe it takes a certain amount of skill. And I, I'm not the person to really appreciate the finest you know, noodles. <laughs> that probably has a lot to do with it though, just how good the noodles are. But this is very different though. When the man that I met at New World Park, he ordered uh, uh, Jawa Mi. It's completely different. It wasn't like this at all. Like to me, this is just another bowl of noodles. But what he had was something different. I think it had um, interesting things on top. I'll have to try it at New World Park and see what the difference is. Another uh, honey lime. Mm. Whoa. This one's not as good. There's something weird about it. Way too sweet. Powerfully sweet. The other one was just right. Maybe I stirred this one up more and got all the sugar off the bottom or something. It's a uh, 360 camera. <laughs> Thank you. It's very good. Or maybe I didn't stir it up enough. Now it's tasting better. I got it all fully mixed. There's a bunch of stuff on the bottom. Look at that. Tons of stuff. I don't know what all that is. Well, I have to thank my friends from last night. And that was a good recommendation to come here. I enjoyed that quite a bit. Very successful morning. Breakfast, brunch, and lunch all put together. The winner by far for me... By clear margin, really, the more I think about it, is the Passam Burr. That was the most unique 
the most interesting dish that I had. The other ones were good, but they really were very similar to you know a variety of types of bowls of noodles that I've had. But the passembur was something quite different. <laughs> I have to be looking at the sign and reading the name in order for me to remember what it is. As soon as I walk away from here, I'll never be able to think of the name passembur again. I've already forgotten. <laughs> No, that was good. I really enjoyed that meal. And the bowls of noodles were good. The lemon lime drink was good. I like the atmosphere here. And me being the being so passionate about how places are organized, I very much enjoyed that aspect of this place. Very easy for a foreigner like me to find my way around, see exactly in English what dish they are preparing at each stall, how much it is, small, medium, large. Payment was fast, preparation was fast, efficient. Yeah, very enjoyable experience. Well, I'm back out on the streets again, obviously. And uh, yeah, kind of a busy area, this around here, all the traffic. A lot of cats too, this is a real cat market. There's uh, quite a few of them wandering around. And I always like to see a bunch of cats. And with that, I guess that's the end of my morning's adventures. I'm going to head back to the Airbnb, relax a little bit there, and see what kind of uh, small adventures I come up with for the afternoon. And whatever those adventures are, and whatever video I end up putting together, hopefully, <laughs> I'll see you in that video.